for. David Hill with HSPN West here on the campus of Servite High School, and I'm sitting with four very, very important young men. Here are four impact players for this weekend's contest versus Jay Serra. Uh, we open league play this weekend. Uh, schools all across the state open league play, and league play for others is one thing. League play for Servite and Jay Serra and many others, and the Trinity League is another story altogether. This is a very, very competitive league. Um, I'll go back a little bit and give you guys some history. I know I told you before, but I played here too. I I played there at the time we were in the Angeles League. It was all Catholic League schools and was brutal from one week to the next. Uh, but I think the Trinity League kind of tops that a little bit with some of the teams that are in it. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. But I want to introduce each one of you to our audience and go right on down the line here. We got Joe Christensen, senior linebacker, TJ McMahon, the senior quarterback. I got DeLon Hurt, which is a great name. I know you put a hurting on people, don't yes, you? Sir. Yep, you live by your name, don't you? Right. Okay, I like that. And Julius Irvin, who's a birthday boy today. Birthday boy. birthday boy today, 18 years old today. Okay, you can't do, don't do anything crazy. <laughs> okay, I heard everybody saying happy birthday it was awful. Okay, we're, we're not going to do that again. Okay, we're not going to do that again. But it's great to be with you guys. It's great to be here on this campus again. Uh, it's great to be back at Servite, and it's great for Servite to be back, right? That's an exciting thing. Um, when I think about Servite and many others that know Servite think about tradition. It's tradition rich. It's the thing that I think made it great for me to come here. Uh, it's great when you come back because you think about the tra traditions. One of the great traditions here is built on leadership. And for those of you who are not Latin savvy, uh, there's, a, there's a program and, and a group called the Curia. Uh, it still exists here, it's been here for a long, long time. A lot of great men have been in that program. You guys are part of that too. What I wanna know is what does that experience mean to you now and how will you, how will you use that down the road? What will it mean for you 10, 20 years from now? Anybody uh, wanna start and comment? Julius. Uh, so, so being part of the Curia is a, a huge honor, you know, um, leading the guys of the football team uh, and the people of the school. Um, what it's going to mean for me 10 to 20 years down the road is just knowing that I was one of those guys that was selected to lead my peers around the school and as well as on the football field. And it's just, it's going to be a great feeling coming back and seeing the younger guys or the guys of the, the last generation um, lead their football team as well. Excellent. Anybody else? Um, it's definitely a great honor knowing that I was selected by one of my teammates or all of my teammates to be a leader of this team. I know where I stand with them and how they look up to me and knowing that I'm always there whenever we're in down times of need. That's excellent. Anybody else? PJ. We always have to be the leaders of the team. We're held to a very higher standard than everybody else. And when we mess up, everybody knows this. So we always have to be on our best and set the example for the team. Excellent. Joe, yeah. I know you're chomping yeah. at the bit to add to this. Go right Yeah. Um, so, like how you said, uh, Survive is based on a very tradition-rich uh, program called the Curia. It's been around for about four or five decades. Um, and like you said, uh, it's just an honor to be a part of the group, knowing that you were selected by your peers and that we've earned the respect uh, from our coaches, our staff, the teachers, students on campus. Uh, and they all look up to us, and we're paved the, we pave the road for uh, everyone else. I think that's all very excellent. You guys don't even know how well that resonates, uh, not only now, uh, certainly 10, 20 years from now, but uh, it's the kind of thing that I'm sure college coaches want to hear. While we're on that subject, let me just ask this question. I always ask this of high school athletes. What, what would it be that you want college coaches to know about you? Whatever school that is, wherever, that, it doesn't have to, you don't have to mention anything, but what is it that you would want college coaches, a college coach where you might go to school, what would you want them to know about you individually? Okay, Julius? Uh, so one thing I really tried to improve on this year is um, my football smarts So being a, a high IQ player, you know, a smart football player, not just an athletic player playing straight, bit, bait, st playing straight off of talent. Um, you know, I watched a lot more film this year than I did last year. So that's just one thing that I want college coaches to know about me, that I'm watching a lot of film and I'm trying to be the smartest person on the field. The film study is, is critical, isn't it? You learn a lot of things when you see yourself on film. Anyone else? Uh, DeLon. I'd say one thing I want my college coaches to know, wherever that is, I'd say I want them to know I'm a competitive guy, a guy that's going to play to the last whistle and always going to give them everything I have. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. TJ? Definitely that I'm a hard worker. I will put in, I'll do anything for the team. That I'm, I'm just trying to get all my smarts in, make sure that they know I'm a smart football player. I don't make dumb mistakes and let them know that I'm there for them and I'll do whatever they need me to do. Excellent. 
Um, what I would say for the college coaches that would be recruiting me or the college I'd end up at, um, I'll take pride in my intelligence and I'll say that I do a real good job of film study, but something that's a little new to me is the position of linebacker itself. Um, this is my only second year uh, playing the position, so my potential, I feel like I could do a lot more and I could do a, a real a good impact for the, for the program itself. Right, guys, thank you very much. Last thing I want to touch on, and this is a little another, another bit of tradition, and uh, I saw it at the end, I, I know what it's all about, um, the hut drill. Uh, pretty special. I, I know a lot of schools, and I've been all over the country with this stuff, and I've seen it from high school to college, what have you. Even youth leagues try to do something of the same, but it's not the same. It's not quite the same whatsoever. What what does that, the hut drill, uh, you know, and you guys will see it Friday night. We'll make sure that we capture that. Uh, I saved it. I didn't, I didn't tape it today because I want to save it for Friday night. It's special, and it's more than just a drill. Is it? Am I? Am I right? Um, so that that tradition. How, let me ask you this: How long did it take you to learn that sucker? <laughs> Anybody? You remember trying to learn it, uh, Joe? Uh, I remember uh, my sophomore year coming on the first uh, camp week with basically with my varsity with the varsity team. We had to practice it in the morning very early, and it took about I say two to three weeks to get it down pat. Uh, it's very hard because the whole team has to be in unison and it has to look crisp uh, for the fans and everything because it means a lot to Servite and uh, being a friar. So. It, it, to on top of this, I know you guys got a comment on this too. What happens when you screw it up? <laughs> How bad is it when you screw it up? Um, I'd, say, I'd say it's very bad. I know pretty much everyone sees it when you do it. You just got to stay focused and make sure you're ready for the next move so you don't continue to mess up everyone else. Well, there you go. Um, I'll add to one more thing to it. I know as far as a hut drill is concerned, those of you that don't know about it, it's a very uh, strategic, intense, kind of calisthenic type of drill. That's what I'll say about it. You'll see more. You'll see it, and you'll understand it more. And just so you guys know, and we'll close it out with this, D. Hill, Coach Hill, me, I'll do the hut. You guys beat Jay Sarah, I promise you. All right, you can hold me to it. I will do that sucker right there, out there on the field when we're done. With us? I'll, I don't know about with you. I, yeah, I'll do it with you. Heck yeah, I'll jump in there and do it. Yeah, I will. If Coach will let me, he might throw me out of there, but I'll do that. You never forget it. That's the one thing about the hut drill. You never forget it. You guys win on Friday. You can hold David Hill accountable. I will jump in there and do the hut drill somehow, some way. Yes, okay? Is that cool? Yes, All right, we're going <laughs> to. <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> what do you say? Yeah, see, the line says start stretching. So, okay, I'm going to be ready. I'm going to be greased up and ready. Right. All right, here we go. So, anyhow, we will have plenty of coverage for you. HSPN Sports West will bring you pregame. We'll bring you a halftime report. And for, certainly at the end of that football game, somebody on this bench is going to stand out, maybe all of you. And we'll be talking to you after the game, wishing the best of luck as you go up against the J. Sarah Lions, opening up Trinity League play. This is David Hill on the campus of Servite High School for HSBN Sports West. Thank you, man.